If I had to sum up the month of Elul in one word, one word, I would probably use the word repentance. That's what we're meant to be doing during this time. The Torah makes it very clear that it is not beyond us to accomplish the repentance we so desperately need to move on with the growth in our lives. Every single year, becoming greater and greater to the point where, by a certain age, a person has become a truly elevated human being. He doesn't have that same jealousy he did as a teenager. He doesn't express the same anger he did in his 20s. And he's much more honest in business than he was in his 30s. So we need to repent to get there. We need to reflect on the negatives that we've had over the years, cut them off, and move forward. And the Torah says that we're capable of it. We're able to do this. There's a fundamental concept in Judaism that God never gives us a test that we cannot overcome. We can do it. If it's there, if the obstacle is there, it can be overcome. And repentance is one of those things. It's not easy. It's not an easy thing to repent. So how come mankind seems to have such a hard time doing this? How often do we find individuals, groups, whatever it may be, that are behaving the same way year after year? The same anger is there, the jealousy is there, the hatred is there, whatever it is, the negativity. We find this so often. Why do we have such a hard time repenting? Why does society have such a hard time with this idea of repentance? which the Torah declares is not beyond us. We're able to do it. So to answer this question, I'd like to explore some of the biblical uh, history that went on to better understand what could bring about a greater repentance. So let's go through the story of Cain and Abel. Both of them wanted to express their gratitude to God. And they offer different offerings to God, right? We know Cain offered the fruit, Abel offered the sheep, and God took Abel's offering. And then, through jealousy, Cain goes ahead and kills his brother Abel. What happens? God goes to ask Cain, Cain, what happened to your brother Abel? And Cain responds the famous utterance, Am I my brother's keeper? The Medrash explains, what was Cain answering to God? When, when Cain says, Am I my brother's keeper? What was Cain really saying? Listen closely. The Medrash explains that Cain was telling God, Why are you blaming me for killing Abel? You created me. You didn't accept my sacrifice. You gave me the negative qualities that I have. You are now blaming me, your creation, for the wrongdoing that I did in killing Abel? You know very well that I killed Abel. You're the one who created me. You created me with my flaws. Don't blame me for what I did. Here we see the fundamental root of where a person can go wrong in his attempt to repent. The root cause of failure to repent draws its history from that first occasion where Abel, or sorry, Cain refused, was unable to take responsibility for his own actions. Sure, it was a sin and he saw it as a sin, but ultimately, am I my brother's keeper? You created him. You created me. You created me with all my faults. It's not my fault that I did that. And the truth is, we see the same thing happen with Adam and Eve. What happens? 
God creates a tree, and he tells Adam and Eve, do not eat from that tree. You can eat from all the trees in the, in the Garden of Eden. Do what you want. This world, I created for you. I want you to enjoy this world. There's one tree, the tree of knowledge. I don't want you to touch it. So what happens? Sure enough, Adam eats from the tree. When God comes over to Adam, he says to Adam, what are you doing? What did you do? What have you done? He wanted to give Adam a chance to apologize, to admit to what he did wrong. But look at what happens. Adam does not admit. What does Adam do? He tells God, you know what happened? The woman you gave me, God, caused me to eat from the fruit of the tree. God then goes to Eve. And he says, is this true, Eve? What have you done? And Eve says, you know, I did eat from the tree. But you know who caused me to eat from the tree? It was that serpent that you created. Again, we find this idea of shunning responsibility. After eating the fruit, God did not punish Adam and Eve right away. God gave them the chance to explain themselves. God really was hoping that they would admit to their wrongdoing. But they missed the opportunity. Instead of admitting and saying, I did wrong and I apologize and I shouldn't have, they referred the, tr the wrongdoing to someone else. And they blamed someone else. They blamed God. They blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. The idea behind a successful repent is looking at ourselves and realizing that the only person that's responsible for the wrongdoing is me, myself, and I. And another example that I can share with you. We find this in the story of the Navi. Who was the first king of the Jewish people? The first king of the Jewish people was the king Saul. Saul was given one job. The first job that was given to him by the prophet Samuel was go and wipe out the evil nation, the evil people of Amalek. And that one thing Saul was unable to do. One transgression. And it costed him his kingship. That was it. After leaving alive the king of Amalek, Samuel saw Saul and he told him, by word of God, you have lost your kingship. That's it. One transgression, too many. Saul did not admit to his wrongdoing. But when you get to the story of King David, King David also transgressed. The difference between King David and King Saul was that King David immediately admitted to his wrongdoing. And he immediately started repenting for what he knew to be an error in his ways. And he did not lose his kingship. My friends, when we look at society, it's an abysmal situation. You have many educated people out there that actually feel that we are preordained to behave the way we do. After all, I didn't choose my parents. I didn't choose my society. I didn't choose my classmates, my friends. It's not my fault that I became the individual that I am today. I don't have the same opportunities that he does. And I didn't have the same upbringing that she did. I am the way I am because of circumstance. It's not my fault. Sure, what I did was wrong, but it's not my fault. The idea behind Elul and Rosh Hashanah is realizing that everything that God did in His creating this world is perfect. It's beautiful. You are an individual that has the same chance as everyone else in your own world to become the greatest person you can be. When we get to the Garden of Eden, when we get to Olam Haba, when we get to the next world, we're not going to be compared to anyone else. We're not going to have a chance to talk about who else may have been involved in a transgression of ours down in this world. It's going to be between us and the Almighty. They're going to ask us, I put you down in this world for X amount of years. Why did you transgress? We're not going to be able to answer for anyone else other than ourselves. We may as well begin now. The idea behind repentance is knowing that if God sees that we are genuine and we take responsibility for our own wrongdoing and our own transgressions, then we can be sure that God will give us the divine assistance 
to move on and move on with our lives and take care of the bad and move for forward with the good. But it begins by looking deeply at ourselves and taking full responsibility for what we have done wrong. And it's not out of reach. We can do it. We can do it, my friends. We all have it in us to realize that we are human, that God created us with good traits, bad traits, and that we can recognize the wrong that we've done, overcome it, but it has to start with a confession. Maimonides explains that the beginning of repentance is a confession and a realization that I did wrong, no one else. I did wrong. And I'm ready to do what it takes to set, to set the record straight. And I will make it happen. Rosh Hashanah is the time to do it, my friends. Elul is upon us. Let's make it happen. Let's take responsibility for those things. We all have things to work on. And God knows that we have the ability to do those, to overcome those barriers and to become the people that we were meant to be. May this be the Rosh Hashanah, where we've conquered our traits, where we've worked on ourselves and really done the repentance necessary to come to a Rosh Hashanah and really energize ourselves with a commitment to move forward and become that great individual we were meant to be. Everyone have a great Rosh Hashanah. Thank you.